Yeah, Amanda, Carl, I talked with News 9 legal analyst Irvin Box. He's read through the pages of the abortion laws in effect now and the ones making their way through the legislature. He says in a post-McGirt world, tribal lands are more than a gray area. I'm going to walk you down the street a little bit. We talked to a business owner that down this block, and this portion right here, this is part of the siding from the front of the building. Now the smoke is kind of blocking the scene really badly right now, but you can see little breaks in it where the roof, and this is what I'm talking about with the smoke cover. It's just redirecting that smoke right back down to the ground in these firefighters' faces pretty much. And this is what people are getting stuck on. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. Now stick with me, it's gonna sound a little wild. And all you need to do is have a friend that has a cat to help you out with it, kitty litter. From the sin bin, Brittany Tulis, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Yeah, Amanda, Carl, I talked with News 9 legal analyst Irvin Box. He's read through the pages of the abortion laws in effect now and the ones making their way through the legislature. He says in a post-McGirt world, tribal lands are more than a gray area. The same law that we see through McGirt decision will apply to the tribes as it does to the abortion law. The relationship between state and tribes in enforcing state laws on tribal lands has been murky since the 2020 landmark case that put nearly half of Oklahoma back under tribal control. From reading the law, all the laws that have been in regards to our recent abortion laws in Oklahoma, I don't think the issue of on tribal lands comes up whatsoever. I don't think it was considered. Bach says under the McGirt ruling, the entire eastern half of Oklahoma could be in a loophole state abortion laws don't reach. Could a tribal member open up an abortion clinic on Indian land unless the tribe makes specific laws that prohibit it? I say yes, the answer is yes. If they wanted to up, apply funds to allow abortions of Indian women on Indian land, they could do that. Per box, McGirt also protects tribal doctors who perform the procedure on tribal lands from legal action. The same for tribal members who aid or abet. As of right now, there are no abortion providers on tribal lands. If one did exist, it's not clear if a non-tribal member would be able to get the procedure after six weeks. Well, that's one case before the Supreme Court now. Is, does an Indian committing a crime on a, on a person non-Indian on tribal land, is that a crime or vice versa? And so I still think that's up in the air right now. And I have reached out to the five tribes who own that land here in Oklahoma. Those that responded say they have legal teams looking at the question, but don't have a comment right now. At the Capitol, Brittany Tulis, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. I'm very angry, sad, you know, I'm really nervous that, you know, he's going to try coming back. You know, I just really hope they catch him. You can see the man in the silver car slowing to a stop on Elder Drive. The little girls, both under 10, run over to the vehicle after he asked how to get to Mustang High School. My daughter, she's very, very helpful. I mean, very outgoing. Everybody knows her in the neighborhood. The silver car came back a short time later, this time asking again for directions and telling the girls he had a puppy in the car. He tried to grab her and pull her into the car. And then uh, she, her friend ran off, got my wife. She screamed and was able to break free. Police say the man didn't have any pants on at the time as well. Adam shook as he watched the video of his daughter screaming for help. It's, it just broke my heart, you know, and uh, I was showing it to the police and you know, you can, it's audio so you can hear her scream, you can see him grab and pull her into the car and it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's just heartbreaking. Both kids are now safe and the man drove off. He looks to be between 20 and 30 years old, is a white man with brown hair, eyes, and beard. She's, she's terrified. Usually have everything locked anyways, but she went around the house and made sure everything was locked last night. The brazen attempt has police turning to the public for help. Yeah, odds are it's probably not his first time, and, and uh, I doubt that behavior is going to stop until we can actually stop him. How's it going? As of right now, Eden says he began trying to get her to go with him. I got you. Well, let's go Okay, hold on. Because he wanted me. I don't know what he wanted to do with me exactly. Whatever it was, it wasn't going to be good. Eden went with him, but not before grabbing her phone and her taser. She texted a friend for help before Green noticed and took her phone. We, we are driving. I am scared for my life at this point. And I ask him, what is going on? You're scaring me. Please stop. Let me out. 
According to court documents, she says she tried jumping from Green's vehicle, but he pointed a gun at her. He had only planned on one person dying that day. But if I, if I didn't say anything other than okay, it would be two. After getting to Green's home, Eden told investigators she was able to grab his phone. I was able to sneak calling, like turning around and calling 911 on his phone and tucking it back underneath my arm. And I kept repeating his name. Why did you take me to your house by gunpoint? She told police she then got into a struggle. She tased him and ran away. I don't even remember my feet hitting the ground then waited for her friend to pick her up. And I instantly hit the floorboard. She is more than just a friend. She is a soulmate. Brittany Tulis, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Yeah, Colby, I am right on the main drag of downtown Seminole. It's Main Street and Broadway is the intersection we're at. And right now, this intersection has no power. There are no traffic lights working. There's a stop sign in the middle. And we've seen a slew of, oh, there's another OG&E car going right through. We've seen a slew of these OG&E cars, these linemen cars, not only driving through town, but in a lot of parking lots on the way into town, schools, businesses, were full of lineman trucks just parked and waiting. And I'm gonna walk you down the street a little bit. We talked to a business owner that down this block and this portion right here, this is part of the siding from a front of the building, three storefronts down. You can kind of see it um, right here. This is the inside. This was covering up that brick right down there. And I'm also gonna, this is what we hear when we walk down the street. I'm gonna point the mic down towards my feet so you can hear it. I'm walking on windows, I'm walking on storefronts, I'm walking on bits of roof. There are bits of siding still right here. This looks like it was part of a sign that's kind of been thrown down the street and we truly don't know where this sign came from and we don't even know what parts of the buildings these pieces came from. There is that exposed brick that I was talking about a little earlier, you can see it. And that big portion in front of it is the whole rest of that siding that we saw back there on that tree went on our first date and it was just it went on for hours and it's like last call oh my gosh pam and jeremy swiping right almost two years ago oh. marking that date on their calendars for a destination wedding in cabo this august then airlines dropped the mask mandate she says just makes you want to hop on a plane and go to vegas and that was tuesday so they packed up and bought a plane ticket nobody else was going to know about it until we got back the first leg from OKC to Dallas went off without a hitch, but the trip to getting hitch hit a big bump in the road when bad weather hit. And we were visibly stressed as we're like <laughs> watching, we're looking at the phone and I, we're doing time math in our head. <laughs> then a man named Chris came over to offer the power vested in him by the state of Texas. Well, I'm an ordained minister and I think I can help you out. From two. The duo became a trio, switching airports after their flights canceled. Pam looking like a runaway bride trying to make the flight. And we are running to the airport. I mean, I'm holding flowers. I'm dragging a dress. They finally make it on board and joke about getting married on the plane. And to Pam and Jeremy's surprise, everyone was on board with the wedding. The flight crew turned wedding party got a little creative turning the cabin into an altar. They're decorating it with toilet paper streamers and they're, they made Chris the officiant a little sash out of snack packets and cocktail straws. It's like they have done it a hundred times. It was almost like when we booked the flight, you know, there was an additional option for, would you like your wedding on the flight? Yes, we'll take the wedding package. Although their honeymoon destination is still up in the air, the couple says it doesn't matter if it's in the air, on land or sea. It won't stop when they get back to Oklahoma. We're gonna have a honeymoon for the next 70 years. There we go. Brittany Tulis, Oklahoma Zone, News 9.